Today we're gonna see a sewing technique and you might be a little bit daunted, but no worries. This is the easiest way to sew a little welt pocket. It's a single welt. You can put this on various areas of a garment. In this case, it's gonna be a small one on the chest. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and I'm so happy to share a sewing technique video for you this time. It is part of a pattern. It is a sort of universal technique and it's super easy. I did a similar video like this back in 2019 sometimes I do videos again on certain topics when back then I was newish to YouTube and my editing skills weren't up to par sometimes I could have added a bit more detail to what I've already got there so I will link that older video for you if you want to reinforce what you'll see here <laughs> although in this case it will be much more complete this is a feature that you'll see in a pattern that will be soon released by Love Notions on Friday just saying <laughs> called cleft coat this is a feature that is present as an option <laughs> this is the line that here i am allowed to show a sneak peek because it has already been shown in their various social sites i have already made two versions of this jacket it's super cute and i decided to just film that welt pocket tutorial separately and have it over here by itself because you could actually borrow these pattern pieces and put this on other patterns you could adapt the width of this pocket make it a little wider it will be easy for you to change the dimensions of this pocket later on if you want to the welt piece which needs to be interfaced and then the other piece is a pocket bag these two pieces need to be the same width you see that the welt piece is a little shorter and the bag is a little longer remember the love notion site-wide sale 30 percent off is still running through friday the 12th on friday the 12th which is the last day of the sale is when this pattern release will happen so i'm just putting out this content a little ahead so you can see what's coming and to give you a little sneak peek of my jackets you won't see them all you'll just see just a tiny tiny bit you will be seeing this sewn on blue linen i have been careful to make sure to mark what is the right and the wrong side of the fabric it will be easy to see the wrong side of the fabric because it will be black because that's the interface side and it will be very easy to see what to do what to mark how to place everything it will be easy 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 for you to follow along or any other thing i know i'm going to be taking these little pattern pieces and adding them onto other things because it's just so cute and it looks really nice and it's so easy so let's see On this pattern, we have a welt pocket on the chest. You know, you could find this around the hip. The welt pocket can be placed in many places. So that mark that you see with a thread is in reference to the welt piece that's gonna go there. So this is where we're supposed to align the welt piece right over here. So you can see these two lines. This is where we're gonna sew and then snip into. That means that that is the area that needs to be stabilized on the main piece as well. There is a little pattern piece for this interfacing piece. I just wanted to show you that you need to place that one inch below that line right here and centered. So we're not supposed to fuse this over here. We're supposed to fuse it a little below, an inch below. And then when we end up sewing these two lines and everything, we're going to be catching the interfaced area right there. So that's done. This is a pattern piece that you need to cut out and fuse on there. I measured it, it's an inch down. So when we look at this from the right side, and this is why I did thread marking, <laughs> I guess I can see it from both sides. Now we're gonna take our welt piece with the lines further up the top, placing it like that. So not like this, you don't want the lines further down there, you want them further up, closer to the line. And this is where we're gonna pin and then sew these two lines exactly, really, really neatly. But before doing that, I do want to serge these edges to protect them. It gets harder to access the serger once we've already done this step. I'm going to quickly go ahead and serge all the edges so that's nice and neat. I've marked my lines with a chalk. It's very fine. It'll be quite accurate. I transferred it from the pattern piece. And we need to sew exactly from point to point there. Very exact there. Okay, here we are at the sewing machine already. Note that the welt piece is always interfaced, you want it to be really stable. At the back we have this area of the garment also interfaced. This line is just to reference where to place the welt pocket piece so it ends up in the place where it has to be. I've done huge basting stitches to keep everything in place, the edges are surged. Now we have a slightly larger piece that will be the pocket bag in another stage later on. This is actually the same width as the welt piece, it's just longer if you compare. 
this one's just longer for this one i've also tidied up the edges because it's easier to do it now than later so now with the sewing machine we're going to sew from that point to that point from that point to that point stopping exactly where the marks are and reinforcing and we're going to use a short stitch length for this There you can see the lines they need to be exactly at the same level there otherwise the work's going to end up a little lopsided so make sure you sew really really precisely there now when we look at this other side these stitches were done very centered into the interfaced area make sure you do reference this line but fuse your piece of interfacing one inch below it and then everything will turn out centered now i'm just going to remove these they come out very quickly i can take this out as well we don't need that anymore and now this is what makes a lot of people nervous it's actually cutting into this middle so i'm just going to fold it here and just make a little cut here so i can get my scissors through so i'm going to cut here and stop three eighths of an inch before so right there and then i'm going to cut diagonally into each of the corners so you want to get close to the corners but you don't want to cut through like that just really close to it that's half done and now i'm just gonna turn this around and go start going the other way to the other side now we're going to head over to the iron and push this to the other side like this and we're going to get a little rectangle opening there this pocket piece this work piece will become the work pocket that you see on the outside as well once we get everything pressed cutting into those corners will allow this rectangle to appear like that but this is looking quite messy we need to head to the iron and sort this out at the iron now we're looking at this from the wrong side you can see the work piece has been turned over this side and i'm just gonna press these seams open a little bit the ones that would just nip to into It'll just help the welt piece lie super neat. It's not that they're going to stay open. I'm just trying to get a good crease there. Same as here on this side at the bottom. A good indication that you've cut into the corners correctly is that you get nice crisp corners. If you had areas that were tugging too much or you weren't getting the little rectangle you might need to go in there and snip now this technique is super easy because we use this area that's longer to just fold it up and cover this now we need to take this and just fold it over until it reaches the top edge of that cutout rectangle just like so so it's going to reach the very edge right there and we're going to give it a good press that little fold is going to form the area that is seen on the other side that is going to cover that rectangle so i've turned it the other way and this is how the work pocket is going to look this is going to be actually the pocket opening you're going to put your fingers in through here and that little fold made the opening of the work pocket and covered all that area right there so now the next part is to just move this out of the way fixing everything in place there we're going to catch that little triangle let me close up here you can see that triangle of fabric there we're going to sew just across there to close that up and we're going to have the edges closed we still have an opening there you could put your finger through there and it's the same on this side we're just going to move this out of the way keeping everything pressed where it has to be and we're going to stitch across that triangle there okay here we are at the sewing machine what we need to make sure is that that fold that we did was right up to that rectangle that this fold isn't going past it looking at it like that now we just need to keep everything in place this is easy because it's linen it doesn't move anywhere and we just need to grab everything i'm just going to put a pin to hold this fold in place right there and what we need to do now is sew these layers, catching this and all of that fold there. And that's going to close the short little end of the rectangle. So we need to move all the jacket away and basically just have this there accessible to us. So we're going to sew flush against that area there. If you've never done anything like this, I would suggest practicing on scraps first. I'm going straight into my main jacket because this is a technique I've done before. So I'm going to start reinforce a little and go right over that triangle such a tiny area but you can see the stitch went right across here now when we look at this from this other side that area of the work pocket is fixed in place 
we can't put our finger through there anymore because that little seam sealed it in place. You're going to end up with that little stitch right there. So that's one of the sides done. Now we need to sort out this other side right here. Now over here it's the same. Make sure the fold is exactly where it has to be, that it's not going over. Push everything back like this, keeping the fold exactly where it has to be. We're going to do it from this side and sew over this triangle. A pin there to keep it in place. And we're going to sew right through there. Remember, it's just these layers. The whole jacket is out of the way here. Once you practice this a little bit and you've done it a few times, this can literally take two minutes to do. There are other welt pocket techniques that are harder. This is the easiest one out there and I love this technique because it still looks the same. We end up with those little stitches here from the wrong side. Then from the right side, we end up with the welt pocket looking like this. Now, this is the opening here. So this part of the welt is done. Now we're going to switch it back to this other side. Now we need to bring our pocket bag. I had already prepared and searched the edges. These lines mean that this is the wrong side of the fabric. What we need to do is align this right sides together. So right side to right side. Remember this is the right side of fabric here. The wrong side of the fabric was interfaced on this welt piece. You can see that this covers all that interfacing that we fused onto the main piece as well. So it looks really neat on the inside. I guess if you had forgotten to search the edges you still could but it would be annoying because you have all of this going on so make sure you surge all of this first it's just so much easier the bag right sides together over here and we're going to align the top edges together and sew them the reason why i want to do my bag in the same main fabric is because it's going to be seen when you put your finger in your pocket if you don't mind having something flashy and contrasty on the inside then that's up to you but this jacket i want it to look more formal than informal Now that that is sewn, I'm going to head over to the iron and just press this down like this and press the seam open like that. Okay, now we're at the ironing board. I'm just going to push this down and press the seam open here from this pocket bag. Now that we've pressed that seam open, we're going to take this bottom edge that's still loose and align it to this bottom part of the welt piece right there and sew it right there. Once that's done, we have to press that seam open as well and then we're going to have our pocket bag ready. Then all you have to do is sew across here to close it on the sides. Okay, so this is the first seam that we did that we pressed open. Now we've sewn that little seam. I'm also going to press it open like this. So that's going to leave open like that. Now, most welt pockets in instructions will tell you to just put, press all of this down and this is going to be the pocket bag. What I have conflict with that is that you get all this raw area here from that little slit that we did and we get that seam exposed. It would be fine if this was a lined garment and lining would protect that and cover it as well. I'm going to go rogue a little bit here, it's usually what I do anyway. And I'm not going to push all the way down to leave that seam exposed there. I'm going to leave a little fold here just to cover that seam right there. It won't make a difference in the grand scheme of things. It will make the pocket bag shorter maybe by like 3 eighths of an inch but that makes me happier. Once I've sewn the edges here of the pocket bag I'm going to go in by hand and do a little bit of stitching to hold these layers together so that this fold here in the long run ends up protecting that seam that was left in there a little bit. I'm going to put a pin holding all of these layers together right here. And we have access, we have a good amount of access here from where the actual well is, about an inch. So we have plenty of space now to go with the machine and just sew these sides up and that will close the pocket bag. Make sure that when you sew this that you keep the seam allowances pressed open like they should be, that they don't move anywhere. Here is the welt pocket on the inside. I think it looks really, really pretty. I'm very happy I left that fold there. Not only does it make it look prettier, but it also covers that seam. 
Now I'm going to take the extra time to do some blanket stitching in there by hand to just reinforce that area and prevent it from fraying and you know getting damaged over time. Okay I'm going to show you this blanket stitch. It's super simple. There's nothing fancy about it. I'm just taking a stitch every eighth of an inch or so, bringing the, the needle through, finding this loop and putting my needle through the loop and then going over and over and over and that is going to give you a bit of a finish right here in a place that no one will ever see. If this is not pretty but it's functional <laughs> and it will give me a lot of peace of mind that I have some type of finish in there and that the edges are not completely raw and unprotected. So that's what I'm going to do across this tiny little thing. Once I'm done I'm going to hand tack it there, hand tack it there, nothing's going to be visible from the outside. I finished doing my hand work in there, it's all nice and neat, I've done a tack there, a tack there and a tack there to keep that in place. Now the next step is optional, you can top stitch if you want to. It would be hard to do it all in one go really. You could sew through all the layers in these short little ends, but if you sew through all the layers there you're going to end up closing your pocket. So you would have to push all of this pocket up out of the way to just sew through the bottom layer, so just through there. So. I would suggest if you want to do it, to do it in two stages, sew from here up to there through all the layers, leave long threads, get those threads, push them back and knot them, do the same over here and then do a separate stitch starting right where that other stitch is and go across but pushing all of the pocket out of the way. If this was on a knit I definitely would not want to do this top stitching because it could make the pocket look wavy and stretch it out but let's do it, it's linen, it's fine, I'm not back stitching anywhere. I'm going to do knots at the back by hand. Okay, so I've tidied up that top stitching then, did the knots. Now I'm going to push all the pocket away. So I don't want any pocket under there. It's all tucked away over here. Remember this is optional if you really don't want to do this. Okay, there you can see the bottom done. It was just through here, just through this seam allowance over here, but the pocket was pushed all the way up. A little bit fiddly to get good access, but we haven't closed the pocket. You can see the top stitching was just on these layers. We can still access the pocket bag there. This is how it turned out in the end. This is my mum's version in blue linen. I decided to make the pocket bag in linen as well because when you put your hand in, you could see that if you used the contrasting fabric. So I want it to look really clean. I've got the little top stitching over there that was done in several stages. I do think the top stitching is optional if you want to skip it. it. You don't really need it, but I did it because there's top stitching in other parts of the garment. This is how it looks inside, all super neat. So there's a little bit of an interfaced area, but that's fine. The little fold right there and the pocket bag. If you wanted to make this wider and put it on a hip area, for example, just make it wider and just make the pieces wider. The technique would be exactly the same. If you wanted this wider, you could also widen that as well. There's so many things you can do, but the technique is so easy. I love doing this. This is another version. This is a Ponte Roma. This is a linen, super easy to sew. Remember, all of this is interfaced before doing the technique. So the interfacing basically suppresses all the stretch of the Ponte. And then the technique just turns out exactly the same as if you were doing it in a woven. Linen pocket bag in there in the black. It's all really neat, very pretty. I think it's really nice contrasting in black there with this print. That's how it all looks inside. It's all black, <laughs> all very neat. This is a small pocket, but you can always make it bigger if you wanted to. I really like it. I hope you like this sewing video. You can always come back to it. Remember whenever you're looking for something on YouTube that I've made, just as easy as typing on the search bar, lifting pins and then the topic that you want and you always find it because I always use the correct keywords in my titles and descriptions. So whatever you're looking for, lifting pins, work pocket, you'll find this video and the older one I made a few years ago. So have a look, save it to your library, your collection maybe, you collect my videos so you can come back to it later and then you'll be able to follow along. Once you do it a few times it will be super easy and you'll just 
get rid of all that nervousness that you might have had. <laughs> Don't forget to check out the Love Notion sale. Please use my affiliate link if you'd like to purchase your patterns. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it is one way that you could support my work here on YouTube because I make a small commission from those sales. And yeah, it does help me a lot. So I'm very grateful if you use my affiliate link. I'll see you again very soon on Friday where you'll get to see all about the jacket. I have a lot of sewing there as well. You'll get to see two versions, one for my mom, one for me. I'm excited to share. So I'll see you then. Bye.